Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Board Games Are For Everybody. And this time we are talking about table golf, major game, major table golf game, major game table golf. Uh, we're talking about table golf. This is a game, I surprisingly have a lot of golf board games. This is the only one that I have had the chance to play. The other ones are ones I am definitely gonna be playing in the future. But this is one I wanted to talk about because it's the only one I've actually gotten to the table. And I think golf as a board game, as a concept, is rather interesting. So let's take this, open this up here and take a look at what we got. We got our scorecards, obviously. We've got our player pawns. And we also have a large amount of dice. Now these are what we're gonna be using in order to actually move our players and we have our board now if i can get this open if i can get this open here we go this is our starting point so if we open this up here we have our golf course this is a double-sided board there are nine holes on each side i believe or one two three four five there's five holes on this side four holes on the other side something that I will mention a little later is the only really negative thing that I have about this game is that if we flip this over here, we've got our four boards on the other side here, but you'll notice that it only goes up to hole nine. And then you have to flip it back over and you're basically playing the same course twice to make it an 18 hole game. Now. It's the only thing that I'm not huge on in this game. It would have been nice if they actually made 18 distinct holes somehow, maybe making it a little smaller, but you're basically playing a nine hole course twice. But let's get to T number one here. So we place our characters on the T here. We're just gonna do a two player game here and we're going to get all of our dice out. Now we're gonna try and set this up in the proper order to 20 is there a 240 on here nope looks like 220 is the farthest basically each dice represents a different club and they are all in different ranges on how far you can actually shoot this is our putter we can put that at the end just want to make sure I get everything in the right order here. Oh, 140. This is our sand wedge. Then I believe it goes this guy. 40, 40, 40, 20. Oh, maybe not this guy. 100, 120. This one. Here we go. Okay. And then we have this dice here, which is used for something we will get to in a little bit. But yeah, this is more or less our board setup. Now, when a player starts their turn, they need to choose which dice they want to use. Now, the highest, farthest you can go with your wood is 220 yards. But if you notice on the other sides of the dice, you have different values. You've got 180, you've got 160, you have 120 with a slice, and you've also got 120 with a hook. Now, if you roll a slice or you roll a hook, determines whether you're gonna end up in the blue track or you're gonna end up in the yellow track. And each of these individual uh, markers as you go along the course are uh, number valued on the sides of the markers here there is a corresponding number which will correspond with whatever you roll on the dice so let's say our green player is starting first you're going to roll your dice if you choose to roll the wood you roll your dice and we ended up with 160 yards we didn't get a slice and we didn't get a hook which means we're going to stay on the red track and we're going to go up to 160 yards puts us right before the bunker which is nice that we didn't land in the bunker had i landed in the bunker say i got the 180 yard shot had i landed in the bunker on my next shot i would have to roll with the sand wedge if you're in a bunker you must use uh, the sand wedge die 
you aren't allowed to use any other die while you're in uh, the sand trap. So then we would move on to our opponents. Likewise with regular golf, whoever is the farthest person back is the next player to go. So since the red person is still on the tee, they get to go next. So they would also roll their die. And they got 180 yards, no slice or hook. So, oh, there, that would have been a perfect, perfect example. So they're going to come to the 180 on the red track, which puts them into the bunker. So on their next turn, they're going to have to use the sand wedge for their shot. Now that we are the farthest back, uh, we get to we get to go. Now we are at the 160 yard mark, and in order to get on the green, we either need to be at 340 yards or 360 yards. If we go less than that, we're going to end up uh, on the fairway or possibly in the bunker. And if we go farther than that, we're going to end up either off the green or again, possibly in the bunker. So. What we want to do is we want to calculate the difference between where we're at and where we're want to be. So 160 to 340, that puts us at 180 away. So we could roll with the green die again, which does have 180 yards on it, but it also has 220 yards on it. Because if we go 220 yards, like I said, 360 yards is the back end of the green and we are 200 away from hitting that so if we roll the 220 we're actually going to end up in the bunker on the back side of this green so we could do a shorter shot with our other die here but we can't quite make it the 180 to get onto the green we can only get a maximum of 140 so I think we're going to chance going with the green die if I didn't drop it on the floor going with the green die and hoping that we don't end up either off the green or in a bunker because it is only a one in six chance to get that 220 so if we get a roll here <laughs> of, of course we get the 220. So 200 brings us to the 360 marker and another 20 is going to bring us to the bunker on the back side here, which will now bring us back to uh, the purple player who, because they're in the sand trap, like we said, they need to use the sand trap die. Now you will notice on this die, pretty much everything is 20 yards with the exception of this 140 yard and also this luft. Now, if you get the luft roll, all you have to do is re-roll re your die, basically. I'm not sure why they actually put it on there. You don't, I don't believe this is one of the ones you get a stroke for. I know on one of the other die, you do actually get a stroke for rolling a certain thing. Field luff means that one stroke went uh, went wrong and we play from the same spot once more, but we must add a stroke this hole. So the luft is indeed what you have to add the extra stroke for. So if you roll the luft while in the sand trap, you roll the die again, but you have to add a plus one to your current score. So we got the 20 yards, which unfortunately keeps us in the bunker. This is shot number two. And because we're still farthest away, we would roll again. We still have to roll with the sand trap. Another 20 yards, still in the sand. Hopefully this one will get us out. And once again, 20 yards brings us to the 240 mark. This is gonna get us out and back onto the fairway. Now we are still farther away, so we do get to shoot again, but we are still uh, or we are on shot number four now, is what I wanted to say. We aren't still on anything, but we are on shot number four now. But being at 240 yards, we're actually only 100 yards away from getting on to the green. So we don't want to be using our driver anymore because chances are we're going to completely overshoot. What I think we are going to do is we're going to use this iron or it might be a pitching wedge or something like that, but we're gonna use this iron, which has a maximum of 100, but everything else is gonna keep us short. I think uh, 
I think this is the safer option. We do also have this other iron here that does have 100 and 120, but you've also got slices and faults, stuff like that. And you know what? The 20 actually, this, this guy might actually be a little bit better because that, that 120 won't actually put us off the green. It'll put us on the back end. So we just have to hope we don't get the slice basically or the fault, which doesn't detriment us at all. It just gives us a shorter, a shorter thing. So we're going to roll this die here and we got a hundred yards, which is good. That's pretty much what we wanted. That's going to take us from the 240 up to the 340. So we are now on the green with the purple player and we're going to be going on shot number five for the, the green. But because green is off of the green, <laughs> the green player is off of the green, he gets to go next. And because we're in the sand, we have to use the sand wedge. So we're going to roll. And we got the 20 yards, which puts us to the 360 mark up here, since we are at 380 on this back one. Now that both players are, uh, well, I was going to say are equal distances, but we actually aren't equal distances. The purple player is the farther player back. So they get to go first. And now that we are on the green, we get to use the putter die. The putter has two different uh, options on it, either a long shot or a short shot. If you roll the short shot, you move one space towards the hole and if you roll the long you move two spaces towards the hole so because the purple player is currently two spaces away from the pin they want to hopefully roll a long shot and they do they got the long so they sink their putt and they get a uh stroke of five for this for this hole being a par four that would be a bogey a plus one and they move on to the next uh the next hole and we wait for our player here who i'm trying to remember where we were here we had one two three we're going for our fourth shot here so what we want to do because we're only one space away is we want to roll short on the dice and that will give us par then we got our short so we get a par and we head on to the next hole now that is pretty much the entirety of the game. And you just have to do that for each hole, uh, either just doing the nine holes or doing all 18 if you wanna do all 18. And at the end of the game, you want to calculate your score based on uh, how many strokes it took you to get in the holes and whoever has the lowest uh, score wins at the end of the game. But there are a few things on some later holes that we'll go over, mainly the red spots that start on hole number three. So say we're on hole number three and we somehow get a godly shot that's beyond these dice and we end up on the 260 yard line where this red die is, or this, uh, this red marker is, sorry. On our next turn, when we go, before we take our shot, we need to roll this standard die here. And depending on what number we get on the, the standard die, we have to follow the corresponding rule in the book. So if we roll our die here and we get a three, we would have to follow point number three. You accepted the help against nature interference while executing the stroke. You're penalized by two strokes which you enter into the scorecard. So you end up taking an additional two strokes before you make your next shot into uh, attempt to get onto the green. And depending on what number you get, there are different circumstances for each number. And that is more or less the table golf. That is pretty much how table golf works. You just go through each of the holes. You calculate your score at the end of the game. And like normal golf, whoever took the least amount of strokes to get to the hole ends up being the winner. Now it is mostly chance, obviously being all dice rolls, but I actually really like the idea of having all the different dice representing different clubs. It allows you to at least choose which one you want to use, which kind of gives you some strategy. It gives some forethought into the game, letting you choose which clubs you use unless you're in a sand trap. So that's definitely a plus for it. 
Uh, something that is a bit of a detractor, like I said earlier, is that it does only have nine holes. It would be uh, a lot more interesting, I think, if if all 18 holes were varied, but it is, it is more or less nine holes played twice if you want to do a full 18-hole game. But that is pretty much it for table golf it's it's a pretty pretty simple version of golf on to a board game and i i think it it works pretty well it's pretty pretty accurate uh, it resembles golf pretty good choosing different clubs trying to get to the green as quick as you can trying not to end up in hazards and that's pretty pretty well it i, I don't have much else to say about it so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video Hopefully I'll see you all next time, but until then, just remember that board games are for everybody, and I will see you all then. Peace.